everybody and welcome back to a brand new Illustrator Creative Challenge here at Adobe Live. I'm your host, Claddy, and I'm super excited to be here with you today discovering the amazing recolor artwork features that those are, uh, if you have not experienced it before, and artificial intelligence, Adobe Sensei power technology that is our fingertips. I know it might sound like a mouthful, but in reality, it's just a technology that allows us to do so many actions in just one click. So yes, the power is at your fingertips. In particular today, this power will be used to recolor complex or simple or anything you want, artwork, vector art from uh, whatever color you want, and uh, you can pick the color theme from another image, from other vector, and I will show you how simple it is to create multiple color version of your art. But first of all, welcome here at Adobe Live. As usual, we are here together in this wonderful, safe community where we learn graphic design tips and techniques to sharpen your skills and maybe create that portfolio uh, piece that is missing to complete your portfolio, maybe here on Behance. And also, if you're watching from YouTube, don't forget to jump on behance.net slash Live. That is the place where I'll be able to read the chat. Yes, because I'm here live, actually streaming from Manchester, UK, and I look forward to see where everybody is watching from. So make sure to use the chat. I like to see the chat keeping busy, everybody saying hello. In particular, I can see um, Steve saying hello. Umacron, what's up? PJ, Barbara, swear. Uh, lovely to see you. Annika, thank you so much for being here with us. Misha and everybody that is joining the chat. As usual, let me know where are you watching from. As I said, I get really, really excited about our international community. I'm currently streaming from Manchester, UK. If you hear an accent, it's because I'm Italian, but I do uh, live here in Manchester although I travel the world finally again. Okay, so I think it's time to get started. Uh, you can uh, open up the starter file, which is uh, linked below in the description, just so make sure to head to the bottom of the description and simply click on the link and you will see a starter file opening up. You can follow along with me and have a play around with this wonderful tool, or you can simply sit and watch, relax, maybe sip a drink, uh, and uh, then you can replay this video because this video is also available on replay. And in fact, what's up to everybody that is watching this on a replay in the future? <laughs> right, it's time to jump into my screen, so let's do so. And uh, here we go. So this is the starter file that we're going to be working with. So I provided you with a vector file. As you can see, this vector is very complex. It's like a drawing board uh, with an illustration and then different elements. And then I provided you also with images. Those are simple images. I particularly use them from Unsplash. Um, again, this is a place where you can just simply download free stock. Again, we're not looking to use these images for any reason as not for their color palette. But imagine the power here. You can literally place any sort of photo you like. So if you see, for example, um, a dress of a friend, or even if you're just like in the link in the underground, walking in the street, and you see a sign, an advertising, or again, like a dress or something that is colorful and has that color theme, that perfect color theme that you had in your mind and you are struggling to find and maybe you spend so much time creating your illustration but you want to change the color well you have the power of capture uh capturing this color with this app and uh also i mean there is an app called actually adobe capture that allows you to do that literally to lift a color palette uh we are going to talk about that in the next stream in fact here at we live we have a new episode of how to graphic design uh coming up so make sure to stay tuned for that as well um, Xu saying, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, I'm here somehow. We're having a graphic class at college website recommended by the teacher. Cool teacher. That is the way to go. Uh, and uh, also I can see Robert in the chat. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in. Richmond, Virginia. Ryan, I used to live, I actually done my high school in Roanoke, Virginia. I don't know. Uh, I think it was a south from Richmond, if I remember well. That was many years ago. We have Misha from Oregon. Fantastic. Sweden. I love this uh, wonderful community. I know that Annika is in Toronto. Our lovely Steve is in New Zealand. Carol, South Florida. Very exciting. Very exciting. Ashrad from Pakistan. Truly international community here at Adobe Live. But let's get started and let me show you how. This is going to be quick, but I'm really going to uh, explore this different way that you can explore this feature. And by the way, let me know in the chat if it ever happened to you that you uh, just wish to recolor your art and you have to go bit by bit. Like, for example, in the past, let's get actually get to work. 
What you have to do is to select a specific part, like in this case, the background, and then you either double click on the fill color and the color picker will open up right here. Let me just move this screen so I can see you better. Um, so yeah, so the color picker will pop up and then you can select another color and then click on OK and then you'll see that the color change. Or you can you can use the eyedropper tool to select any color from an image. You can press the letter I to activate the eyedropper tool. Again, it's called eyedropper tool because it looks like a little eyedropper is also located here towards the bottom of uh, the uh, toolbar and it allows you to you know, lift the color. So you could do that already in Illustrator, but that will have to, you know, something that will be something that you do step by step, item by item. You gotta click, select, and then choose a tool and then recolor. And then that's a waste of time. We don't have enough time. We wanna move fast and work smarter. So what we do is select the entire artwork. So click and drag over the artwork. Make sure that no layer is locked. So you can go and uh, have a look at the layers panel and maybe open the little layer there. And we see that nothing is locked. Locked, so perfect Every, everything will be selected if something is locked this feature will not work uh, because of course as you know already locked layer are locked in order to preserve their appearance so of course if the layer is locked nothing will take place um, let's see it looks like there is no question in the chat Pixby is saying smarter no harder absolutely um, PJ is also said I use global color um, but let me show you how this wonderful feature uh, and it's quite new. I mean, the, 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 uh, let me let me jump into it because the entire feature has been there for a while, but the color pick color theme picker is quite a new addition. I think it's been two uh, version of Photoshop that has been there. OK, so first thing is we select the artwork. The second thing is that we head to the top edit menu right there. And then from there, we're going to scroll down until it says edit colors and then from there we're going to access our recolor artwork once you go ahead and click on the recolor artwork we will have our recolor artwork workspace or panel popping up now let's have a look at the panel so here we have a color library so if you do have a curated theme of a library that you want to uh, access we can actually access this curated library those are standard i have not created myself they come right away with the adobe subscription so if you do have illustrator you will be able to access this color library food kid stuff metal nature neutral and so on so you will be able to access this library we'll have a look at it as well uh, or you can choose how many colors you wish to select in this case i'm going to let illustrator or as i said adobe sensei it, uh, which is uh, adobe artificial intelligence doing the work let it work to auto and you will see the first thing so first of all what this panel does is analyzes the color that we have i don't know what i've done there I literally uh, left the place so again edit edit colors uh, recolor artwork uh, what I wanted to do is to zoom in so you can see. So the first thing that you will see is that automatically those are different colors that Illustrator has picked up from my design. And also here you will see that prominent colors into different location. One is the color wheel. And then here we have this prominent color um, area section of the panel that just shows you and organizes the color uh, by you. So you will see that here we have all the warm color and then we go towards the, uh, all the, the darker color. And and this is something that you can already do. So, for example, if you don't like the distribution of the color, you can actually use this prominent color in order to distribute a hue in your design. But the amazing technology that we're really looking for before we dive in further into the details of the panel is this one here, the color theme picker. This is that revolutionary feature that came out a couple um, years ago. If you select the color theme picker and then you either click once or you click and drag if you want to marquee any area of any image here you will see that it will automatically change your illustration every aspect of it every single color it will reflect the color of the image and by the way that can be an image it could be multiple images um, it could be uh, another vector item it could be multiple vector item your uh, possibility are endless and I'm actually gonna move my little panel away and I'm gonna collapse this layers panel there so you can keep and have a look and look how funny it is so imagine if you're like uh, creating uh, NFTs or if you're creating different version of a specific uh, artwork look at that you can just 
create different color variation in one click. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on reset because there is also another step that is really cool. So if you go ahead and uh, use the shift O shortcut or simply click on uh, the uh, little artwork, artboard panel, um, oh gosh, artboard tool that is located on the toolbar just up there you will be able to access the artboard. Artboard are the canvases, the container that the, the, determine the bounding box of your illustration. So you can, first of all, click and drag while holding the Alt key, or there will be the Option key if you're working on a Windows machine. And they will allow you to create, copy. Now, bear in mind, if any item is locked, you won't be able to create a perfect copy. So go ahead and create as many copy of your illustration. So that can literally be anything and again anything that you select if there are parts that you want to preserve you can anytime just simply lock them through the layer panel super easy if you don't know how to do that by the way every layers you can find uh, sorry every panel is located under the window menu so window and layers if you do not find the layers panel and then from there you can simply lock uh, by clicking on the icon, on the empty space next to the eye icon and the little lock icon will pop up and they will allow you to preserve the specific item. So in that case, you can keep it uh, and can keep this saved. So again, let's go ahead and select this image by clicking and dragging on it. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see a little bit better. I don't like when it's so zoomed out. Okay, that should work. So click and drag to select all the artwork, edit, recolor, uh, edit colors, recolor artwork. And again, we're going to go ahead and use, where's the panel? There we go. We're going to go ahead and use our color theme picker. And in this case, I'm going to select our first color. Uh, and, and here it is. So now there, are, let me show you a little bit more of details of this panel. So the first thing that you can do here is to, as I said before, change the distribution of the colors. So, so if you're working with this prominent color and maybe it's like, you know what? I want less of this gray blue. I really want the yellow to be the prominent color. Well, you can hold and drag this little slider and you can change the distribution of a color. So we can make this blue maybe be like the color that is a little bit less and same for this little brown. I think there is a green in there as well, uh, but you can go ahead and really make the prominent color one of this yellow color. Now, another thing that you can do is to swap around the color order. So by doing so, you can see that we are still working with the same color palette, but we are creating variations within the same color palette. So we still have the same color that we lifted from the image, but we are reworking it in this case by changing uh, their order. So they're going of swapping between the different elements in the picture. Now, another thing that you can do is to work with the brightness. So you can make the color darker or you can make them brighter by using the slider here. Now, this uh, brightness and saturation reflect the position, of course, of the colors in the color wheel. So you will see that here we're just the brightness of the entire color wheel. And if we work with the saturation, you will see here again, we're going to have a more saturated or a less saturated color panel. And imagine the possibility here. So that's just one uh, of our images. Again, press the letter V if you wish uh, to exit this mode, and then you can go ahead and do that infinite time. I'm just aware of the time that goes always too fast. Let me see if there is any question there. Uh, does it support spot colors? Yes, under the library, and I'm, let's go ahead and um, recolor artwork and use the color library, you should be able to find the spot color here. Um, let's see if we have some of this color. I've not been uh, user defined. Those are just the patterns. I don't think we can find them there but you will be able to define a color library yourself and if it's made of uh, spot colors you as long as you have a library of colors that is there that you saved in your swatches panel you will be able to access there so it probably be by user defined because as i said those are the ones that come uh, straight from uh, um, uh, 
uh, from Illustrator. Look at that. We have this uh, Middle Ages color coming up. Kids stuff, I'm sure it's going to be nice and bright. Here we go. And again, you can change the distribution in order to create a new variation of the color. Now, you can also change the saturation and the brightness randomly. This is so fun. So you will see that by clicking on it, you again get a random variation. And I feel so bad because we have this panel exactly on the image that we're working on. Uh, but let's go ahead and select the color picker because I think that this image is quite bright. Uh, let's see what is going on. Maybe let's change it to this one here. Even brighter. Fantastic. So as I said, the first icon allows you to swap the color order and the second one, their brightness and saturation. So literally, you can spend an entire day create infinite variation of any artwork, artwork that you created. But I want to do one more time because I want to create something even a little bit more different here and go a little bit on details on what was the default, the classic recolor artwork panel. So that was probably what you uh, used in the past if you ever used this tool. And by the way, let me know in the chat if you used that before. Again, I'm going to go ahead and select another color theme. Here it is over here. So we, another, we have another variation. Something else that you can do, which I find very, very exciting. Again, I'm going to change randomly uh, the distribution of the color. Maybe one more. And then I'm going to change the brightness as well. So you can really take advantage as much as, much as possible. It looks like I really like brown tones. <laughs> Everything is leaning towards a brown. But as I said, if you want to bring back a little bit or the other tones, you can always use the prominent color in order to uh, swap it up and have some fun with that. Maybe let's bring a little bit more of orange there. Fantastic. Now, another thing that I want to show you is that if we do go ahead and select the advanced options are definitely worth to mention. You can really have fun with uh, the single color. So you have more control manually on the colors. Uh, in fact, you can apply if you do have a swatches panel that you've created for a specific project, you will be able to access it right away. In fact, if you click on the color swatches group, in this case, grayscale or web colors, you will see that the colors will be automatically change reflecting that swatches panel. But what if you like all colors, but you need to change one specific one? Well, real quick, first of all, you can swap the color. So let's say, hey, I want the orange to reflect this yellow and I want this bright yellow to reflect whatever was orange. But in this case, I do not want to use the green. Well, all you have to do here is to double click on the color and then the color picker will pop up. Let's find something very different. Maybe this magenta, maybe something this bright blue. I don't think it's there, this royal blue. Go ahead and click on OK and you will see automatically that that color is added there. And uh, if you want to see a more dramatic look, we can swap it with the pink and is there. Again, possibility are absolutely endless with this feature. What if you're not happy about it? Well, in just one click, you can go ahead and click on reset and you can bring him back from scratch. Now, if you apply the specific color palette, but again, you want to refine the specific color that you are using, don't forget that here you have access to the use saturation and brightness slider that will allow you to have more control. And let me go ahead and choose a color that is visible, like this pink one here. So you can choose the uh, saturation of the pink and bring it towards a color, a coral color, and its brightness. So you can make it with more white or with more black, so you can make it darker or or lighter again just with the uh, slider uh, and then if you really wish you can change the hue directly from here as well now uh, something else that I want to show you here is that there is an option to open this workspace uh, at, from scratch. So if you were used to use this particular recolor artwork, artworks workspace, which was the original, um, uh, that was the default whenever you click on recolor, recolor artwork, you can click open advanced recolor uh, on dialog launch and click on OK. And I'm going to say yes, we're going to save that color group. So look what happens here. Once I now go to edit, edit color, recolor artwork, we will have the open advanced color artwork on the dialog box. Now, I really like to um, use the color theme picker. So I that's I think that to me is the most exciting part of this specific feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you one more time because it's just so super cool. 
uh, you can simply apply different colors. And I don't know if you knew that, but you not only can select an image, but you can click and drag to select a specific part of the image. And here we go. Our uh, color has changed again. Now, one more thing uh, before we get going, let me just change a couple more so we can export them together. And as I said, that's why I was talking about power at your fingertip, because this is literally what? One click in the menu, one click to open the panel, one click to the bottom, and then boom, here it is. And then literally is up to you uh, to change the combinations of color for this specific project. I think it's so cool. Imagine how much time you're going to save. It's, uh, I think it's pretty amazing. Right. Now, once you're done with your artwork and with its different variation, uh, you can export them. And if you're looking to export this design for your Behance project, so for example, you can have a page of a single artwork and almost do like a whorl uh, where you have different color variation of the same project. And that could be just one single project to feature maybe different color palette that you're experimenting with. Maybe you can have the image and then you can have the actual illustration that you've picked the color uh, from. Now, the only thing that I want to remind you is that this artboard will have to be a thousand and four hundred pixel wide. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in, select your artboard, shift O or click on the artboard tool, look at it at the bottom at the toolbar. And then here, all you have to do is to input a value of a thousand and four hundred pixels. The height doesn't really matter. This just reflects the width of the project in order to have a full screen full screen professionally uh, displayed inside your Behance page. Perfect. Now uh, you can go ahead and let me see. I don't know if you can do that with all of them. I think you should be able to. Perfect. So you can click on one artboard, hold the shift key and click on the other artboard to select them all. And as you can see, I've changed the size of each artboard. Now, the beauty is that it changes by uh, from the center. So uh, the artwork is still centered. It just trims both sides. And what we'll have to do is now to export this one by using the option command E. Uh, that, of course, will be the Alt Control E if you're working on a window machine. And then all you're left to do is to select the item that you want to export and then make sure to pick a folder in your machine. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this folder Recolor and click on Create. And then from there, just simply click on choose. And uh, uh, you can also maybe here if you want to have a prefix or not like color number, and then you can go ahead and personalize it. Uh, all you have to do here is to go ahead and export our board. And you will see that here, those are your artboard with different colored, ready to go on your behance, on your portfolio, on your Instagram, wherever you want. Uma Cron is saying this recolor artwork is so handy, it gives you a combination you probably wouldn't have come up yourself. I find that super, super useful. I have, by the way, if you have effects like grain um, or other effects that are applied to your images, it's even more mind blowing. I actually recorded um, a tutorial for my Instagram. If you want to come and say hi at I am Clady, I'm literally publishing Illustrator and Photoshop tutorials every single day, and they are one minute long, so one minute for one skill uh, to learn. So come and join. There is a, a feature with a recolor uh, artwork on effects as well using Illustrator. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. I'll have to go and put a little bit more lipstick on for my next stream on how to graphic design. We're going to be exploring uh, greeting cards. Don't forget that there is a brand new creative challenge coming every single day and I will be with you until the end of the week. And then you're going to have another fantastic host that is going to be with you for more challenges in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you guys had fun and you took the chance to learn something new with this amazing app. Again, go and grab a glass of water if you're watching for me too. YouTube, jump back on Behance for more fun learning graphic design here at Adobe Live. I will see you very shortly. But for now, bye bye.